Lots of us spend proper money getting good suspension for our mountain bikes, but are you really getting the best performance out of it? Make sure your suspension is in good working order because riding in dusty and dirty conditions affects every part of your bike. And even though suspension has seals to keep muck out, eventually they'll still need a service to extend their lifespan and make sure they're working smoothly and properly. You can send your suspension off to a service center for a professional teardown where they will be inspected and rebuilt with fresh oil and seals, or you can keep on top of more simple cleaning and lubing of seals at home to extend the time between the need of doing full services. This is another really important part of making sure your suspension system is working. You can go back at any time and check this or start all over again. It's really simple and let's start with SAG. This is an easy thing to set up, especially if you've got air forks and shocks, which probably are the most common. Uh, you can get coil sprung, of course, forks and shocks. Slightly different, but let's start with air. Super easy, all you need is a shock pump and something to measure how much sag you're getting. So you can see that uh, O-ring I've got on both my shock and my fork. You could stick a zip tie on there just for doing this, then I'll take it back off to be fair. But basically, that is showing you exactly how much your suspension unit is sinking in uh, when you put your weight on the bike. So that's what sag means, just that measure of how much the bike sags when you put your weight on it. And then you just need to adjust the air pressure inside that uh, suspension unit to make sure you get it about right. So my initial setup is always about 30%. So you're looking for that rubber ring to be a third of the way along that shaft. Uh, some forks, uh, rock shocks actually, have those uh, the measures on there. So they have 10, 20, 30%, so super easy to do. Same with the fork, but I like to run less sag on the fork, so more like 20 to 25% sag. So this is the, probably the first thing you do when you get yourself a new bike or new suspension is get that sag sorted. But I would check it after a few rides because you might find that the seal soften up a little bit and it changes slightly. From there, you could tweak your sag for the terrain, for the conditions, but if I'm honest, I wouldn't. I leave mine the same. If I'm looking into the finer details of setup, I'll then start looking towards the dials. The only time I might change my sag is if I'm wearing a particularly heavy backpack or if I've got bike uh, packing bags on there, so the weight goes up on the bike. Other than that, I won't change it. And if your sag does start changing, if your fork or your shock starts getting softer, maybe it's losing air, then it shouldn't do that. It's time for a service. Digging deeper into the tuning of your setup, I think is where the biggest gains are to be made because especially on the more higher end, more expensive suspension units, you're gonna have dials that have sort of more adjustability, which means that you can be further off. With cheaper suspension, you've got less chance to really dial suspension in, but it's gonna be more likely to be okay. Whereas with high suspension, yes, it's brilliant, but you can get it really wrong and it can really affect how the bike rides. And this is where I'll really tweak my bike depending on the weather conditions, the tracks, whatever it is, so much setup goes into these dials. I think one of the main reasons people don't mess around with these dials too much is because they're worried that they can maybe damage their suspension. Don't worry, you can't permanently damage your suspension if you get this completely wrong. Although I will say it's worth going to the manufacturer's website and have a look at what they recommend as their base settings, because then at least you can go back to those. Or in fact, actually that is my starting point when it comes to setting these dials up. Most suspension manufacturers, Fox included, have a really helpful guide and once you know your pressure, you've already done that, and your sag, so now you know what pressure you've put into there, they'll get, give you a base setting for how many clicks out you should have these dials. So normally you'll wind them clockwise all the way in, and then it'll tell you six to eight clicks or something like that, or whatever it means, whatever it says, and you do, you do that in anti-clockwise. So from fully closed, you wind them out. Like I say, that's a good base setting, and from there you can then tweak even further. Rebound damping, which is this dial on this Fox shock, this controls how fast the shock rebounds after a big hit or a compression. If the rebound is too fast, i.e. it doesn't have enough rebound compression, you can bob and lose control or grip. Too slow and suspension can pack, which means not rebounding in time for the next hit, and that can make your bike feel harsh. Some shocks just have one rebound control, so that controls it through the whole uh, different types of hits it can get. 
This Float X2 shock actually has high speed rebound, which controls the big hits and low speed. That's for smaller bumps, but at any speed. Compression damping controls how fast your suspension compresses. So on Fox, that's this blue dial. So more compression damping is gonna slow down that shot from going in. So good for controlling big landings or to aid pedaling efficiency. Again, compression damping can be split into two different control dials. High speed compression for large fast movements like drop-offs or low speed compression for G outs or compressions in berms where the bike is squashed but you might still want some travel left in reserve. For this shock, I use a three mil Allen key to wind in or out the low speed compression. So winding it in clockwise adds more as clockwise takes compression off. Uh, and then the high speed compression is a six mil Allen key on the outside. Lockout lever on my shock is blue, so that tells you corresponds with this one over here as well. That is compression damping as well. So all this does, as it says on there, put it this way, makes it firmer. So it just increases that compression damping. Great for pedaling or for hitting jumps. It's just not going to go in as hard. Digging even deeper into the tuning of your suspension. These modern high-end suspension units on mountain bikes are just so good compared to 10 years ago. The amount of adjustability you've got in there. If you're a tech head, they are a dream, basically. Uh, so next, we're gonna look at tuning your air spring. Does that even make sense? Guess it does. But looking at air volume spaces. So now you're basically altering how much air volume there is inside that fork or shock by adding or taking away tokens, which are essentially small pieces of plastic. The more tokens you put in, the more progressive your suspension is, meaning the further you go into the travel, the harder it gets to compress. Good if you ride your bike hard, or if you're a big rider, that with the correct sag, you still go into the travel a lot, sometimes bottoming hard. The opposite to progressive suspension is linear suspension, where the travel feels the same all the way through. Now with air units, you can take out all the tokens to make it as linear as possible, but this is more how coil springs feel just as standard. It's worth noting that bottoming out your suspension is not necessarily bad. You're just using all the travel, but if you're doing it too much or too hard, then it's going to be harsh on you and your bike. Nowadays, you can even get a bit of help from electronic devices, things like the ShockWiz, which are small units that will uh, you attach to your fork and your shock, and they'll give you some really good data analytics to how well your suspension is working or how much you're using it, and if you can set those up a little bit better. We've even seen just recently, actually, Mondraker launched that Mind system. Again, similar sort of idea, really helping you get in the best out of your suspension. There's apps available as well. Fox and Rock Shocks have apps to help you set up your bike. So it's a modern world. Why not try and use some of those things to really get the best out of your bike? So once I've done the uh, initial setup of my bike, so I've done the sag, I've looked at the base settings off the website, clicked them in exactly how it should be, that's when I'll go and ride the bike. I won't mess around with sort of linear progression or adding tokens or anything like that to begin with. I'll ride it, and then what I find is situations like this, so big G outs, where I've got up to speed, I've got used to my bike, I'm riding it hard, and then on a big G out, if I find that I'm going further into the travel, so my bike's further in than I want it to be, because I don't want to drop in too hard, because for me, this isn't the biggest hit I'll take. I might be doing some big landings or proper G outs where I still want the bike to have more travel. If I feel like I'm going in too far here, that's when I'll think about adding more progression to the bike. So adding more tokens. Also, it's worth mentioning that some bikes you can actually do it without delving into the fork of the shock, you can actually do it on the linkage. So the Newt Proof Descent downhill bike and actually the Giga, now you can actually move the main link position really easily and that will make the bike more progressive or move back more linear. But this is a situation where I feel if I go in too hard on a big G out, then I'll probably want to add more progression so I don't sit quite so far into the travel.
In reality, you're never gonna get your bike set up perfect for every track or every ride, um, but you can get it pretty close, especially if you start you know, experimenting with your dials, really trying to work out how they affect your bike. Or even doing runs, I used to do testing with Fox back when I was a pro downhill racer and we'd go places and just really change tiny little things on our suspension. And if you actually ride thinking about it, you can notice a difference. And once you get into that mindset, you can start setting your suspension up yourself pretty well. Um, like I say, start playing around with it. I think you can make some really big differences and make your bike work as perfectly as possible for you. I find nowadays that I kind of get that base setting from the website and I don't stray too far away from there. Although if I'm going somewhere like a bike park where it's pretty smooth and there's some big jumps, I will definitely use my lockout just to firm that suspension up, get some extra pump, get some extra pop. But when I come to more natural places like this, I'll definitely open it back up for that small bump sensitivity. Give a thumbs up if you like fiddling with your bike and riding it hard.